How I record flight timing videos. That's what we're going to talk about uh, in this one. Uh, I got a couple sheets of paper with some info on them. Uh, just in case you see me looking down, it's because of this. Before I get started, I should also say that anything I talk about in this video, any kind of gear, gadget, gizmo, anything, will be linked in the description. It'll go to Amazon, it'll be an Amazon affiliate link, and if you use that link to buy that particular item, I'll get like a commission of 1 or 2% or something like that. So let's get started. First thing we're going to talk about is the camera I used to use. And it's the camera that I used since the beginning up until very recently when I bought this new setup. This is it right here. This is the Canon M100. It is a very small, cheap camera. Very small and cheap. This is the kit lens. I use the kit lens, it's a 1545. This is the lens that came with the camera. The camera cost me 400 bucks. Nowadays, you could probably get it new for 350, maybe even less. Used, maybe 250. It's, um, it's not a very expensive camera, but it has a lot of good things that makes your life easy when you record videos like this. First thing it has is that it has a very short minimum focus distance. That means that the distance from the sensor to the object you're trying to actually focus on can be about 10 inches away. Uh, that's pretty good. The other thing it has is, is that it has a crop factor. What is a crop? This is probably the most technical thing of what I'm going to talk about. We're going to get, we'll get this out of the way right in the beginning. Crop factor. Crop factor is basically if you take a frame of what you can see, what the actual sensor can record is smaller than that when the crop factor is above one. This has a crop factor of 1.61. And usually you see that designated as one colon 1.61 or 1.25 or sometimes even two. So what does it mean? It means that it's almost like it's digitally zooming on the object. That's the easiest way to say it. But Another way to, to explain it is, is that this is a 1545 lens. It has a crop factor of 1.61. That means this lens at 45 millimeters, when you have it zoomed all the way in, isn't really 45 millimeters. It's acting like a 70 something millimeter lens. This is important because it's almost acting like a bigger zoom lens, but the minimum focus distance is still for a small lens. If you look at a zoom lens, like for instance, if you went and found a 35 to 90 or something lens like that, the minimum focus distance is going to be something like 18 inches or two feet, sometimes even three feet. But you're getting a 70 something millimeter zoom lens with a small minimum focus distance. That's really important. Now, what does that mean? It means the quality when you record in 1080p isn't really 1080p because it's not one to one. It's one to one point six one. It's um, but it's still good quality. But in the in terms of fly tying videos, that crop is really really important because it allows you to get that fly that's very small, big enough that it fills up the screen. So the crop factor is important. And if this is actually let's remember this when we start talking about the new camera and how uh, a smaller crop factor can make things very difficult for you. The next thing this thing has that's good is, is that it has a flip out screen. This is important because you want to be able to see if it's recording, you want to see the ISO. The ISO is like the, 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 the level of brightness that, that you have set and you should really be getting your, your stuff dialed in so that you always know, okay, my ISO always needs to be 800. Okay, my ISO always needs to be 400, whatever it is, depending on your light setup. That's how bright that, that the, the video is going to be, the ISO. The higher the ISO, the brighter it's going to be. And uh, yeah, the last thing is, is that the last thing that makes this thing good is, is that it's very small. It takes up very little room on your desk. A big camera is going to take up a lot of room. So that's the good things about this. There are some bad things though. The first thing is, is that there's no external mic hookup. That means you're using the internal mic. And unfortunately, if you really want really good audio quality, it's going to take a lot of post-processing, meaning you're going to have to take that audio and do things to it. You're going to have to take out the hum. You're going to have to even it out. You're going to have to boost levels. You're going to have to do things. That's what I had to do with it. Now, if you don't care about your audio as being great, if you're going to just want them to be okay, this is going to do that for you. But if you want them to be great, you're going to have to do some extra work. It's uh, It frustrated me a little bit. After a while, it frustrated me. 
Uh, the other thing this thing doesn't do well is, is that it doesn't take good thumbnails. This is not a great picture taking camera for close up pictures of objects. It's not, it's completely different than landscape or something like that, just a, you know, a portrait. It's actually a good camera. I have, I have pictures from, from this camera that are, that are really good, especially outside when it's nice and bright out on the beach or something like that. It takes a great picture. But as far as taking a picture of a fly, bad news. You better be really good at Photoshop if you want to take a picture with this and make it work. You better have lights that are, we'll get to that after this, but they better be the brightest lights. They would burn your hair off. That's how bright they got to be. The last thing that's a problem with this camera is, is that it has a 30 minute record limit. And probably 90% of the cameras out there have this limit. It's a, it's kind of a confusing thing, but a, 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 essentially what I have learned is, is that uh, this is what most people say, is, is that in Europe there is a tax on a camera that can record longer than 30 minutes because it's like a film, it's like a film tax. This is a filming camera, so it's like the filming industry wants to charge more for that camera. Wants you, wants you to, wants to charge, meaning they want to add a tax to it because it's like a way to protect the filming industry. Um, so a lot of companies who made cameras like this they said, you know, we don't need to do 30 minutes. We don't need to do over that. Let's just let's just cut it off. We don't have to pay the tax. But the problem is nowadays, right? Obviously, everything is video. Video is so important nowadays. So cameras are starting to get rid of that 30 limit, 30 minute limit. If you're doing a little fly, something dry fly, nymph or something like that, 30 minutes is no problem. I mean, if you have a lot of screw ups, then maybe you can go over 30 minutes. So there's a lot of editing that needs to be done. If you forget the materials, if you don't have them laid out, you're going to eat up into that 30 minutes. But usually you'll be all right. The problem is when you start something to do something bigger, big streamer or a salmon fly. And this is the problem I ran into is, is that I was doing salmon flies and they were just, it was just, it's brutal. I mean, you really, you have two jobs. You have to d tie this really elaborate, beautiful salmon fly, but then you have to manage the camera, manage the recording. It's very, very difficult. The editing on one of those things, just not to get off topic here, but the editing on a salmon fly video takes longer than tying the salmon, the salmon fly because you have to watch the entire salmon fly being tied. You have to watch it and then you have to go back and then you have to piece it all together. It's very difficult. It takes probably about three times as long as the tying. <laughs> right? It takes about three times as long. It's really a brutal process. Um, so so those are the, that's, the, that's the good and the bad of this camera. If you're just getting started, this is a really good camera. This is a really good camera to get started with. Really good camera. Uh, let's talk about tripods. This right here, I didn't always use a tripod like this. This is brand new. I just bought this a few weeks ago. You know what I used? Books. That's it. I just piled a whole bunch of books on top of each other, and when I got the camera close, I started using pamphlets to like dial it in. It's free. Use books. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna tell you what the problem is with books, is, is that if you have to move the camera for any particular reason, meaning you have to change the battery, right? The battery on this camera, actually, I should point out, not that bad, not that bad. But if you're doing a lot of tying, doing long videos, you're gonna to have to change the battery. Well, if you just have the camera sitting on, on some books and you go and you move that camera, even if you bump it for some reason, if you go and reach for something, this has happened to me before many times, you just, you just, you just bump it. You will never get that camera back into the place that it was before. It's impossible. It can't be done. And what will happen is, is that when you, have, when you have the video, when you have the fly recorded and then you do whatever it is to that camera and you put it back into the spot and then you try and edit it to match it up, that fly is going to jump. It may jump just a little bit, it might jump a lot, but it's going to jump. And if you want things to be perfect, it's you're going to notice that it's going to be frustrating. For a while, I didn't care about it because I just wanted to, I just wanted to have some fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then I just said, you know what? Hey, geez, I, I want things to be, want things to be really good. And that's when you need a tripod. You need a desk tripod. See, like this. This one is a newer, I got the number right here, CK30. It's not an expensive tripod. This thing was like 50 bucks. That's not much money. Um, I mean, it's it's 50 bucks more than books, that's true, but it's not that much money. And the good thing about it is, is that once you dial it in, you put that thing right on your desk, you mark where the legs are, and if you have to move it, if you have to, if you have to change something, if you bump it, you can always put it right back where those legs are. As long as all these knobs are tight, really tight, 
the file will be exactly where you had it before. And it can be that way every single time. Now, granted, if the fly changes size, you're gonna to have to move it. But if you have your space for your dry fly, okay, this is where I do size 12 to something smaller, right? This is where I leave it. Well, and this is where I do if I'm gonna do a salmon fly, or this is where I'm gonna do on a big streamer. If you have those things, you'll never have a problem with having to move it if you have to change batteries or something like that. So the tripod works. Now, you can use a big tripod. Like what I'm using right now to talk to you is on like a full-size tripod. The issue with it, with that is, is that you need to have your desk away from the wall. You need to pull your desk away from the wall. And you need to put the tripod behind the desk. This means, though, that you're going to have a lens that has to get closer to the fly because remember now you're, you're the camera's further away that can be a little frustrating so i would suggest the desk is the way to go uh, the desk tripod is the way to go um, i mean if you want to do a tripod behind okay but you're gonna need it i have a desk that's 24 inches you probably need that most of the time though desks are 30 inches deep that means it's going to be really far so Think about that before you decide you want to use a floor tripod or like a full-size tripod. Lighting. Um, lighting is, I know this is a cliche, but lighting is the most important thing. It's absolutely the most important thing. I used to use just, right, you can see behind me, uh, I just used a couple of these desk lamps. After a while, it was, it was great at first, but then after a while, I just, you know, you start doing harder, harder flies, takes longer. Those things are bright. They're shining right in your face. You start to sweat. You, it looks like you're trying to interrogate the, the vice. It's really, it's a little bit frustrating. I went down to one desk lamp and then I got lights on the ceiling called Barina. They're basically LED lights. I have six four foot lights and they're mm, 6,500. 6,500 is super, super, super white bright. It's way brighter than daylight. Normal lights, like you have like on your end table or something like that, is like a 3000. And it has like a very yellowish quality to them. You don't want lights like that. You'd need 150 of those lights to get the room bright enough, but it still would have that yellow quality. This is a very white light and it's extremely, extremely bright. And, and they're also, what's great about the two things is the one is that they're very cheap. Those six four foot lights, 40 bucks shipped Amazon. Um, that's what I paid for. I, and you can find deals too. I got a 12 pack one time for $65. It's, they're very, very cheap. And they're easy to install. You just gotta screw them into the ceiling and then there's some plugs that connect them all together and then one plug oh, goes right into the outlet and has a switch on it. That's it. It's not like back in the day where you had those lights where it had balusters. You remember like your, your office or something from you know 20 years ago where that light, the lights would flicker because the baluster was going out. It's not like that anymore. LED has pretty much taken over the the um, I don't know what you want to call it like the workspace lighting is um, in the garage like I said I have those these lights now over all my workspaces they're great that's what I would do you can also get umbrella lights uh, they work if you have a lot of room on uh, umbrella if you have like a station where you're just tying and you have a very very big room you can use an umbrella light uh, it's like a white umbrella with a, with a bright bulb behind it. They need to be extremely bright because they have to go through the white umbrella and that softens them up. I use them. I'm using one right now. It's right behind there. Uh, they work. They're great. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but you need a lot of them. They need to be extremely bright. These Barina lights, they don't need like a white umbrella in front of them because they're so far above. Uh, they're, mm, I don't know five feet above the desk, so they're great. Um, well, okay, the last thing would be on lights is, is that sunlight is great for photography, it's not great for filming because it's unpredictable. Uh, for, for a picture taking, it's predictable because we're only talking about one second at a time. You can wait and then you can take a picture. You can wait and you can take a picture. With, with filming 30 minutes, a cloud goes by, changes everything. Uh, you're doing a you do a video and then you have to pause and then you pick it up 45 minutes later the sun's in a different position it's unpredictable you see the shades here i have the shades closed and i keep the shades closed all the time and this allows me to do videos at 10 p.m or 10 a.m it doesn't matter it's all 
it's 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 a predictable light. Everything is in the same place all the time, and you never have to worry about the sun. If you if you have to use the sun, meaning you can't buy any lights or anything like that, or you just don't have a place, meaning like I maybe using the dining room table or something like that, make sure the the window is behind the camera. It has to be facing you. If you put the if the, you put the, the 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 window behind you, it's going to be a total washout because you'll have the camera trying to film sunlight. It's not going to work out. They got it's got to be behind the camera. But I would say if you can avoid light. That's for filming. You want to avoid light. Um, so what did I switch to? What did I switch to? I had this, and I changed to what I'm using right now. And what I'm using right now is. It's definitely an expensive camera. Now I'm saying I'm not saying that if you need to upgrade from this, this is what you got to go. I don't agree with that. I, I think that you probably shouldn't do this. And the reason I got this camera, and I'll tell you what it is, is uh, it's a Sony A7C. But the reason I got this was is that as you saw in my previous video, my wife and I weren't having a kid. I wanted something that can take really, really, really good pictures. So this is a full frame camera, and this is. This is like in Sony's professional line. It's not the super, super pro professional. It's more like a middle of the road. They have like a 7 III, they have the A7C, they have the A7R, S, and the S and the R, they're like the super professional ones, and this is kind of middle of the road. Still extremely expensive, still kind of overkill, uh, but I wanted it for other things, and I wanted it to solve a lot of my problems. And I'm gonna tell you what the problems were. The first problem was mic. Internal mic here, like I said, post-processing. Didn't want to do post-processing anymore. I wanted predictable audio and I wanted it to be simple. So this, I can hook up a mic to it. Uh, and we'll talk about mics after this camera, but I can hook up a mic, the audio is predictable. There's no hum, there's nothing that needs to be done to change the audio, to make it better, the levels are good, everything's great. The next thing that I had a problem with is, is that I never knew what you could see. Like I talked about with the with the with the flip out screen. The flip out screen is not used to see the fly and say, "Oh, there's something wrong with it." Because that fly on that screen is going to be smaller than the one that's right in front of you, right? The actual fly is bigger than the one that's on the screen. It sounds crazy, but that's the truth. This camera can hook up to a monitor. To my right, you can't see it, but I have an iMac. This is a new iMac. This is another thing that I've upgraded. Uh, I had an iMac in 2015. This is a 2020. It's a 10-core, so it's the new one that came out. It's It basically is the top of the non-pro iMac. The iMac Pro, they didn't update that. They updated the regular iMac, and now it's a 1080 um, um, you know, camera, and it has the 10-core you can get. That's what I got. And this camera will hook up to that, and I will be able to see, it's 27-inch iMac, I'll be able to see the fly very, very big, just like I would when I'm editing. I can see it, and I can see any problems. Because there's the amount of times that I have tied a fly that I thought looked great, and then when I got it up on the screen to edit, uh, the screen to edit, it would just look terrible, and I just have to throw it away. I mean, I've done flies like four or five in a row. The same fly. Couldn't get it done. It's because I can't see what you're seeing. That's going to help me out a lot. Um... The quality of this camera is, this is an amazing camera. It's going to make thumbnails so much better. Uh, like I said with this camera, not good at thumbnails. Thumbnails were like, every time I had to take a picture for a thumbnail or to post on Instagram, I just, I just, I wanted to cry. <laughs> the, it was so terrible. But this camera is, not only is it way better, but it's way easier. You hold this camera with your hand and try and take a picture, blurry every single time. It doesn't have like a steady, it doesn't have stabilization. This, you can take a super perfect picture with just your hand. You don't need a tripod, which means you can get closer to things. You can move it into better areas for light. It just changes the entire game of thumbnails, and I'm very happy uh, with this camera, uh, with that. It's a full frame camera, so what does that mean? That's why I can take really good pictures. It's a full frame, full frame camera. That means that the crop factor is one to one. Not one to 1.61 or one to 1.25, it's one to one. Now, if you remember what I said about one to 1.61, if you remember that, what did it do? It was like a digital zoom and it made things great uh, for, fl for fly tying. The problem is one to one means what? It means there's no more digital zoom. 
which means the fly is, looks further away. So the, there's only two ways to defeat this. Money and digitally, right? So I could have spent a whole ton of money on a new lens, but I didn't want to do that. I defeated it by changing the crop factor internally in the camera so that I could digitally zoom in closer. And also, I added a filter on the lens. Now, it seems a little ridiculous that I paid all this money for this camera just to turn it kind of into this thing. But there's a couple things we have to remember. Is, is that I can film in 4K. Now, I'm still learning the whole 4K game. The first video I, I, I the first video I think I did on this, it wasn't in 4K, it was in 1080. I'm still trying to understand it. This is in 4K. This can't do 4K. It can only do 1080. So 1080 with the crop factor is less than 1080. This is 4K, and the crop factor is not as much as this. So, yeah, it's not exactly 4K, but it's still way better than this. Plus, there's just the quality is going to be better. Um, the quality of that video is going to be better. So, yes, I am kind of turning it into this in a way, but the only alternative is to, you know, plunk down 1500 bucks or something on a lens. Who the hell wants to do that? That's ridiculous. Just for fly tying videos, doesn't make sense. I can use... I don't have to have... I can have the crop factor one-to-one -one for the thumbnails. I can have... I can have the... the like right now, the crop factor is one to one. It's only fly tying that is a problem, and the quality is still going to be great, way better than I've had. So I think that that's fine for now. Maybe in the future, the upgrade is you get you get rid of the filter and you get rid of the crop factor, and you go back to one to one, and you get like a very very specific lens to do what I want to do. But that's a serious investment. I don't know if it's worth it. I, I really don't. Um, so we'll see what happens with there. But that's the that's pretty much it. Let me look. Now the flip out screen with this is to the side. This one, if you notice, right, it's at the top. But if you have a mic up here, which I have, I have a mic hooked up on the top, it blocks the screen. So this is a side flip out. That's great. Um, two more things. The first is, is that the 30 minute limit, that's gone. This camera has no limit. You hit that record button and it will record forever until the battery runs out. And that's the next thing. The battery is so much bigger than this one. This is the battery that's used in the Super Pro, like the R and the S, use this battery. It's the same battery. So it's, it's in, it, the battery life is incredible. And I spent 20 bucks and I got two more of these batteries and a charger. Same thing with this. I mean, the batteries are even cheaper for this one, so I'll link those in the description, but you can just buy batteries. It's not like back in the day. I mean, this is, you go into Amazon, a million companies make batteries, and they're just as good or, or maybe a hair not as good, but it doesn't matter. It's, you're talking about so little money, there's no reason to ever have no batteries. Just buy a bunch of batteries. So I got three of these batteries. Now I have the two that I bought and the one that's in the camera. And that's probably going to be enough for me. I don't see why I'm 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 ever going to need. Maybe if I go on a trip, let's say I go on vacation or something, and I, I take the camera with me, maybe it'll be easier if I get a couple more batteries. But five total, probably the most I'll ever need. That's really cool. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm really happy about that. The um, and that's pretty much it. There are some problems though. Um, I mean, I think the obvious problem is is that freaking everything's expensive. Everything is expensive. It's ridiculous. Um, I mean, the camera is six times the cost, but then every accessory is now six times. The, it's 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 ridiculously expensive. It's like borderline extravagant. Um, but the quality is really good, so that's like I, why I wouldn't call it extravagant i wouldn't say like oh you're going from a mercedes to rolls royce rolls royce is extravagant um and there is there much of a jump between the top of the line mercedes and a and a, and a bentley or a rolls royce yeah not that much of a jump but the cost is a big jump right <laughs> the cost is three times as much but this the quality is so much better it's it's six times the camera for sure for six times the value uh, the last thing is is that there's a massive learning curve. When you spend this much on a camera, you get a lot of features. And I am not some professional photographer or filmer. I mean, I don't I don't know any of this stuff. I mean, I, I 
I, I'm watching YouTube videos nonstop trying to figure this camera out. There's a big learning curve. Uh, and it, um, it, uh, it kind of leads me to editing. And I'll just talk briefly, briefly about this because I'm not going to show the actual software and stuff like that. But I used to use iMovie, which came with the iMac, or came, came with Macs. Uh, I've switched now to Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is like the Sony A7 versus the, the M100 of iMovie. There are so many features, so complicated, and I would say to you, unless you uh, just want to better yourself as an editor, don't switch out of iMovie if you're going to use iMovie. And if, you, if you're using Mac, you're in great shape. If you're not using a Mac, if you're using Windows, I wouldn't know where to begin, I'll be honest with you. There's nothing that comes with Windows. Now, there's probably some cheap, there's probably some cheap editing software. I, I bet you if you just do a search, you could probably find a very cheap iMovie-like editing software. iMovie is so easy to use. It's incredible. I mean, literally the first time I used it, I was editing. I taught my wife how to edit on iMovie. She does it for work. And she's now editing interviews and stuff. Learned in, in a couple of sittings. And it's not... It's, um, iMovie is incredibly simple. For Windows, I don't know, but there's probably an iMovie-like piece of software you can buy for Windows, and I bet you it's not much money. Um, Final Cut Pro, kind of expensive, 300 bucks, but uh, I'm going to give you a 90-day uh, trial just to see if you like it. I just wanted to get better at editing, and I feel like if I was ever going to do something in the future with editing, I really got to be on Final Cut Pro. So that's why I did it. It's, it's basically just a better myself. Um, and I would really hate to film on this 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 camera and then put it in iMovie. I feel kind of stupid, honestly. Um, which is, I'll, be on, I'll also be honest with you about that. That's dumb. Feeling that way, saying, oh, I really need to you know, make my life more difficult. That's not what I was trying to do, you know, because I'm using this great camera to make my life more difficult and use this professional software. That's actually pretty stupid. And in fact, the, the reason I wanted this camera was because it did, did so many things better, but easier. Meaning, better audio, but I don't have to do any post-processing. So it's, 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 it's better and it's easier, right? Uh, the, the, the hooking up to the monitor. I can now see the fly. I can do videos easier and they're going to be better so it's 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 that's what i want i didn't just want to make something twice as good but it's twice as hard that's not that wasn't the point of this that's a, that's a that's that's probably a dumb dumb thing to do you want to make your life easier uh, don't spend money on something unless it's going to be better and easier those are the two things you need um, and that's pretty much about it. Now let's talk about, let's, well, quickly let's talk about mics. This is not really that hard to talk about, but right now I'm using a Rode mic. They make a million different mics. It hooks up onto the top and they're, they're good. Uh, there is something like a wireless mic. You probably know what that is. You've probably seen little like receivers hanging on people's, uh, belts or something like that when you watch TV shows or something. Those are good, but you need a really, really good one for it to sound as good as this Rode mic. I bought one that was cheap, it was like 50 bucks, garbage. I returned it. I'm not even gonna link it in the description, it's worthless. You're probably gonna need to spend 200 bucks to get the really, really good sound quality. Um, and so a wireless mic, it hooks up to the top, it plugs into the side, and then you have a receiver with a lavalier mic coming out of that receiver. What is a lavalier mic? It's just a little tiny mic with a wire that plugs into something. It plugs into the wireless receiver, or you can plug it right into the camera. You can get a lavalier mic that's just a from you to the camera. And they're good, and they're cheap, but they're dangerous. Now, this is why I don't use one. They're good, they're cheap, but they're dangerous. This is, this is the problem. If you have your lavalier mic running onto the floor, up behind your, your desk or something, and plugged into the, the camera, and, I don't know, you say, oh, geez, I forgot some material or something. You forget that's on here, which you will absolutely forget it's on there. You're going to turn around, you're going to swivel your chair, you're going to stand up, and you will yank that camera right off your desk. If you want to use a lavalier mic, I totally get it, because like I said, they're, they're good. This is what I suggest you do. You plug an extension into the camera, 
and you run it underneath your desk and right here right here you connect it to that desk and you plug the lavalier mic into that extension and you make sure that that extension is tight to that desk and then if you get up to walk away you don't yank the camera you yank it out of the extension or you probably yank the lavalier mic off your off your uh, off your shirt and a lavalier mic a good one maybe it's forty fifty dollars and it's 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 going to take a lot of abuse because it's really just a couple of wires into a mic and you're not going to ruin your camera that's what i would do personally so those are those are really the three types of mics honestly the internal mic in this camera is really good at the distance of fly time. The problem is, is that I do other things other than fly time. Right now, at this distance, three and a half, four feet, I wouldn't trust it, personally. I want the mic. But um, but yeah, it's not that bad, and it's really good when you're only talking about one foot, one and a half feet. Definitely good. All right, so let's talk about the hurdles you're gonna run into when you do these, these videos. The flip out screen. The flip out screen is only good for centering the fly. That's it. Um, um, and then obviously it's good for seeing the different things that you're recording at. For instance, it has the record symbol right on there. You know you're recording. It has the ISO. ISO is like how bright it's going to be, let's say. You always know, okay, I always need to be 800 at ISO. So you can see that, that, that it's there. And that's good. And you can see that the fly is centered. But that's it. You can't see, you can't see what's going on with that fly. Another thing you can't see is how big it is on the screen, really, because the screen is so small, you don't really know. But this is what I do, and this is what I suggest you do, is, is that you figure out exactly where that fly needs to be on the screen and how much of your vice you can see. Like, I know if I have a size 12 in this, in this vice, and I can see this part of the vice, it's zoomed out too much. And I gotta I got move the camera in closer. And... So figure out where that is on your vice. And then when you look at the screen, you can say, okay, I can see, you know, half this dial and that's exactly where I need to be. I can see half that dial and that's perfect. If you can see the whole dial, mm, I should just move in just a hair. That's what you want to do. Because the next hurdle you're going to have to get over is, is that that fly's got to be close. I'm telling you, if you record it and it's too far away, it's going to be garbage. You have to remember that more than one-third of the people watching your videos are going to watch them on phones. And that phone is this big. That's it. Now, you're editing lots. I'm editing on a 27-inch. That fly is bigger than the phone when I'm editing. It's bigger than the It's huge. It's like a grapefruit. But it's this big on a phone. It, it, if you don't do it right, this is how... This is it. You need... You need that thing to be pretty, you need it to be like five times the size of the actual fly. That's what you need. You don't want it one to one. So make sure you have it zoomed in as much as you can. Um, now, listen, I try and get as zoomed in as possible. When I do a salmon fly tying video, I have that thing jammed in there. And it's, I do it, I don't do it for me because the fly looks worse. The closer you get, the worse the fly is going to look. Every imperfection you're going to see. I do it. I do it for for the subscriber. I do it for the viewer. I do it for the person that's watching this video. I want they're watching to learn how to tie this fly. I want them to see everything, and I I just hope they realize that. Okay, yeah. I mean, he's zoomed in so close, things are going to look a little strange sometimes, and that's just the way it is. Um, I hope they understand that. Um, I hope you understand that. But that's it. I mean, I, I get really close. You don't have to get that close. And you just got to get close enough so that people understand what they're looking at. And if you get any closer, it's going to be more difficult. So what I would say is start out where it's the right size. It's, it's nice. You can see it. You can understand what's going on. And then maybe over time, you want to get a little closer. Okay. If you tie a fly 30 times and then you want to do the video on it and you feel like you're really good at it, maybe zoom in a little more. Don't zoom in a ton and then the next video zoom <laughs> like this. You want you want consistency. That's important. Little tiny increments. Jump little tiny increments. Um, I said you're going to see tiny imperfections. You got to decide you know, how tiny the imperfection has to be for you to continue and put this video up. Um, the amount of time I have, I have recorded three fly, I've recorded three fly tying videos on this camera right here since I got it. 
I recorded them. I recorded them many times and then I recorded them. I thought they were good. I started editing them. I finished editing them. I put them in a folder ready to post. I always watch my videos before I post. I went in there and I looked at them. I'm like, mm, this one's not good. This one's not good. This one's not I chucked them all. Tossed them. And I, it's just, I delete a lot of videos before posting. I really, really, really do. I mean, I can tell you there's probably at least 20 videos that I have just said, you know what? And I've recorded, and videos are not just fly tying, other videos. Um, I've recorded videos for things, hours it's taken me. And I just dumped them because I just didn't like the footage. Well, right before this, I recorded the fly tying room one and I dumped it because I didn't like it. <clears throat> you got to find out where your level is. My level has moved up over time. And I've, I've, in the beginning, it wasn't that high. And then I've, I've realized I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. And I think the channel is pretty good. And it's because I'm very like, uh, I'm stringent. You know, with 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 the quality, with what I'll post. I, I want it to be good, and I want the information to be good, and I I I've recorded this a whole bunch of times. So, um, I mean, we're doing one take. I'm trying to get this where there's no editing, and a lot of my other videos where I'm talking to the camera, there's no editing. That's 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 how I like to do these particular videos. So you got to figure out where your level is and then hopefully over time you just make it better and better and better and better and better. And as soon as you get more comfortable, then you can do things like one take, uh, one take videos. Uh, art. This is along the lines of the imperfections, art. Yeah, this thing of fly tying, it's part of a sport of fly fishing. But it's really an art and art is subjective and you, if you feel like what you have looks good, post it. Don't worry about how other people view it. There's always going to be someone that says they don't like the way something looks. Um, it is the way it is what it is. I mean, you're going to have to deal with that. Uh, I mean, even the best people doing this, even the best people, I mean, the best, I think we all can agree, is Davey, right? That guy, he gets hate. I mean, it probably less than anyone else, but the guy is, this guy gets hate too. And, I mean, he's the nicest guy about it, of course. You never see him get angry at anybody. But, I mean, he does. I mean, he 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 gets some hate. And that means anybody that's worse than him, which is everybody, <laughs> right, is going to get more hate than him. We have to deal with that. It's just the way it is. And you can put some things in place to, to make life better for you. You can... You can you can approve comments. You can not even have comments. You can turn off comments. You don't you don't have to have people commenting. Um, I mean, you can do a lot of things, but if you're gonna have a channel and you're gonna post videos, you're gonna have to deal with this. It's art. It's subjective. People have their p opinions on this stuff, especially if it's salmon fly tying videos. Whew. Do not get into the salmon fly tying unless you're okay with dealing with the haters. Because there are more haters in salmon fly, the salmon fly world, than any other part of fly tying. It's the worst. But it's very rewarding, and that's why I do it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, you know what? There is one more. There's one more. <clears throat> There's one more, actually. Organization. This is something really big that you're going to have to overcome. You need to make sure you, you need to be at production level organization when you do these videos, because if you're not, you're jumping around, you're moving around, everything's all screwed up. And the, not only are you going to have to edit all that stuff out, you're going to get flustered and you're going to screw the video up. You're going to screw the fly up. I guarantee it. So get organized. We'll go back to Davey. That guy has everything. The guy has John Cock eyes. They're freaking laying right on the desk next to each other. Even all he does is whoop, pick them up, show them to you. Go like this, put them right on. He has got everything laid out. And that, I believe, is because he is not a production tire for a living, but he does production tying for people. I mean, he he definitely sells flies to certain people that have bought flies from him, you know, for, you know, over the last you know, 20, 30, 40 years. Who knows, right? Um, so he does do it and getting good at that will get you good at doing fly time videos because you will be set up. And I'm telling you, when I forget something, I mean, when I'm, when I go through all my stuff and I, even when I try and set up, I would, I try and do, I try and get everything laid out. 
And I try and tie a few. Sometimes I don't tie it. Sometimes I don't tie a few of the flies. Man, I, sometimes I have my first run at the fly. I just go for it. And a lot of times they come out pretty good. But um, it's usually when I do that, that first time, where I think I'm going to try and get it. I'm going to try and do this on the first time. You know what happens? I forgot one of the materials. So tying a bunch of them first is great for two reasons. One is it gets you used to tying them, but also it gets all your material laid out. And even if you've tied this fly 10 times before, but it wasn't on that day, so all the stuff is back where it is, maybe you need to tie one of them, just one, just to get everything laid out and know that you have all the materials. Because the first time you go and tie it, sometimes you forget the stuff. It's amazing. There's six materials in a fly or something, I don't know, you know how many times I forgot one of them and I was like, oh, wait a second, I gotta do, I gotta put that rib on, right? Oh, geez, I forgot the wire. Oh, I gotta turn around, go into my drawer, get the wire, and then I'm just like, you know what, let me just start over. Because I'm annoyed with myself or I don't, I wanna do it in one take or who knows what it is. But get organized. If you watch my, my hopefully I can get this video out, my fly tying room, it's organized. It's very, very organized. And I try and keep it neat. And Usually what I do is is that tying season for me is somewhere like December to maybe December to April and then it peter teeters off and you know till April or June is like a small little bit. Because I'm like filling the box, extra filling the box. Sorry about that, that's a message that came in. So I I clean it right before I start tying tying season, which is December, right? After bird season, and then I will go until maybe like February and then I'll clean up again. But I have to say I'm I'm trying to get more in a position where I'm always clean cuz now I have so much stuff. When you see when you see everything that I have now, I really have so much stuff that if I if I'm not cleaned all the time, if I'm not clean all the time, it's it makes it very difficult to tie. You're always looking underneath things. That's another thing. Organization is not just about keeping everything organized. It's about when you're tying a fly for a video, just have that material out. Don't have six rolls of thread hanging out, you know, four packages of dubbing because you were tying flies before that. Just have the material that you're using for that fly on your desk, ready to go. Don't have anything else. You know, don't have the, you know, a, a, a dubbing loop tool. If there's no dubbing loop, in, in, in your fly. Take the dubbing loop tool, put it back in your drawer. Try and stay organized. So that's pretty much it. I, I know it's a long video. I hope you learned something though. If you have a question, just put it down in the comments. I will answer any question to the best of my ability. I bet you I have an answer for the question regarding fly tying videos. I really do. Um, I have learned a lot over the last couple of years with these things. I really have. Um, I. Um, and I feel like if anybody has a question, I bet you that I bet you I have an answer. And if I don't, I'll go find the answer and then I'll play it like I knew the answer. <laughs> so that's it. I hope this helped you. I hope you can do some fly tying videos in the future. All right. Thanks.